I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me. And I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. So nearly three weeks ago now, Anthropic drops computer use, which essentially allows Claude 3.5 Sonnet to run code on your computer, open up applications like Excel spreadsheet or text editors, and essentially run your computer to execute tasks almost fully autonomously. In this video, I'll go over everything about computer use from getting set up on a Replit environment to setting it up locally using Docker, as well as interacting with the API. So I'll leave some timestamps in the description below if you want to hop around the video and let's just get right into it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the computer use demo. So you're going to start off just going to replit.com, creating your free account. And then once you're in your dashboard like this, you can just create your REPL template. And then here you can search up computer use and create it. So now we're going to have the computer use demo already loaded from Anthropic. You can take a peek here into uh, some of the code on the left-hand side, such as the streamlet code, which is the front-end interface. You can see the loop, which is the uh, kind of like agent loop that takes messages and executes tools or actions if it hasn't reached the final outcome yet. So we're just going to click Run here, and we're going to miss, be missing these required secrets. So that just means we're missing our Anthropic API key. So we'll switch over to our console.anthropic.com dashboard. And then just click here to get your API keys and create your key right here. We'll copy this key, keep this safe, and paste it in there. So now you can see that the demo is working. And this is creating a local environment inside of the kind of REPL, REPL template. And so you can actually click around here to switch the tabs, which I like. And you can see the shell as well as the AI chat. I think this one's more like a helper. But now we can get started with actually playing around with this tool. So there's actually the output tool. Oh, we can refresh. See what's going on here. But we can actually move this window around like this. And I'll actually hide my code and this code because we don't really need that. And you can see that's hitting this error. So let's just try refreshing the connection and stopping and starting again, maybe with an API. Oh, great. We hit a bug right away. Let's refresh the page. Okay, let's try this one more time. So you can see that it's going to start loading up the server. And now we should be able to see Streamlit. So in this URL, it's going to be loaded on the left hand side. And we'll set it to only send the last 10 images. And we can set a custom prompt. And we'll just say, your name is Hal9000. Respond in the third person. Okay, so now we'll send a message to Claude saying, Tell me about neural networks. Use Wikipedia for resource. So now this is going to start running the agent loop, which you can see starts the custom prompt. It'll start taking screenshots of what's going on on the browser which should be showing up here on the right. Refresh this connection. So you can see here that it's taking screenshots as it goes through. And you can see here on the right-hand side that it did indeed go to Wikipedia. And you can see here that there's different types of actions that the, t that the computer is using. For example, there's left clicks. It'll click on this search or enter address bar, just like a human would. And then it actually has different tools like typing text. And so it'll input the text. For websites that are popular, like Wikipedia, it already knows the URL structure. So that's really handy. And then it presses the Enter key or the Return key. It actually downloads the entire page from Wikipedia using the curl command in the shell. Maybe we can preview that here. Yes, we can. And then it looks like it was able to download something. And it looks like we got all of the HTML content from the page, which is great. So now that it's able to view the entire web page. It gives us a comprehensive summary based on neural networks. And now we can do more things with this data. So I like to use the computer use kind of like a virtual assistant, where first I 
ask it to do some research for me, and then I'm going to ask it to create some sort of a summary for me. So the easiest way to do that for now is to open text editors or CSV files. So I'm just going to ask it to open a CSV file and create some columns. We're going to keep track of this research on neural networks. Save it in the appropriate place and open it so we can view it. OK, so the agent loop is running again. And while that's running, I'll actually show you how this is working. So in the Streamlit interface, when you send a message, if it's from the user, it'll send it off to Cloud API along with any screenshots or previous messages that you sent. Then it's going to describe, or we describe in our application what kind of tools we have. So we have different mouse clicks, different mouse movements, and keyboard actions and system actions. So this is like typing a URL or hitting enter. And then the system actions is something like the bash commands that you saw for um, downloading the HTML content from the Wikipedia page. So it takes all the information from the tool result, as well as screenshots um, every single time it does one of these tools, so that it can then relay the images back to the chat and back to Claude, so that it, it can determine if it has achieved the goal. And if it has achieved the goal, then it might uh, pass in the stop condition. And you can see that um, you can't see it in this editor, but I'll show you in a sample API request that you can actually see the stop reason. OK, so let's see how we did with our task. So we asked it to open a CSV and create some columns and keep track of it in this CSV file. So you can see that it used the command tool again, and it gave it a temporary path. And it gave it all of these, this indicator separates between values. It saves it in this spot. And it saves all this data. But it looks like it didn't open our CSV file. Can't see it on the screen. Please open it. So yeah, this is one limitation of computer use. And they've identified this in their blog post, actually, that the computer use is actually about 14.9% of a human level skill. Um, with a human is 70 to 75% of this OS world's uh, evaluation criteria for using a computer. So Claude is getting 15%. Uh, which is much better than the previous AI model. But yeah, nowhere near close to humans at using computers. And we can kind of see this by how many screenshots it takes to do something. This is a little bit better, actually. I think they've made some improvements in the last week. But previously, it would take a lot more screenshots and waste a lot more API, um, kind of like dollars on your API account, because it would just get stuck on certain pages. But I'm actually seeing some improvements already in the model. So some other things from the blog post is that we should be careful about these things called prompt injections. So prompt injections are basically when somebody puts something into your system prompt, which causes the LLM, or Claude in this instance, to start behaving differently. For example, if you scrape a web page on Wikipedia and it says that you should send all of your money to a certain address to you know, satisfy the AI overlords, then your model might take that as instructions. And actually, if it has access to some of your sensitive accounts, like your bank accounts, they might be able to actually execute those transactions on your behalf. So that's one thing that we should be careful of. Um, and that's why we use uh, things like virtual machines uh, on REPL, so that uh, we're not actually exposing our data yet. Another limitation is that you actually can't get um, this uh, agent to log into any accounts for you. or Create accounts for you. So you can see this if this when this fails to open the CSV on this, I think on this REPL, it's failing to open the CSV. But when I show you how to set this up on your local PC, it'll be able to open everything properly. So yeah, when you try to create an account or log into an account using the chat interface, it's not going to let you. If you want to log into your account, you'll have to actually go here and type it in yourself um, for like accessing emails or bank accounts. And just another thing that's funny uh, regarding like the blog post is that um, Claude actually, in one instance, was like supposed to be doing a task. And then it actually took a break from coding and started to look at pictures of Yellowstone National Park. So just an interesting kind of like ADHD moment for our LLMs, where the LLM just started going off and browsing pictures um, of mountains, which is kind of cute when you think about it. Another thing to note up here is that even though Claude is the leading model on using computers, 
because it's taking these snapshots of the screen at certain times, it definitely can miss things like notifications or something that just pops up super quickly on your screen. And this is to be expected, like this is um, quite an expensive demo to use actually. And you can see even here, it's just failing and failing and failing. And this is all running money on your API account. So just be wary of like uh, watching this and kind of pressing stop if it's going overboard. But I'll actually show you some of the costs that I incurred on this. So I determined that for 19 screenshots, it was about 13 cents. So per action, you know, roughly speaking, all the tokens and counting that stuff aside, it's about 0.7 cents. So if you have 100 actions or 1,000 actions, it can add up pretty quickly. And you can see that for some things, like even just opening a CSV file, it'll get stuck sometimes. And that's just a limitation of the current models as well as the current interface that we're using. So in the next section, I'll show you how to set this up locally on your own computer using Docker. Okay, so now we're in the Anthropic Quick Starts directory. And all we're gonna do is grab either the HTTPS key or the SSH key. We'll grab that and get clone that in our local directory. The next thing that we're gonna need to do is go to Docker and have this installed and running on our computers. I won't cover this for the purposes of this tutorial, but it's free to set up and pretty straightforward. So once we have our Docker running, so once we have our Docker running, uh, we can go back to our coding environment where we have our demo loaded. So we're in the Anthropics quick start directory and I'm just going to go to the readme file for this, which is somewhere in here, here. And so here we can actually see how to get this up and running super quickly using the Anthropic API keys. So this is gonna spin up a virtual environment using Docker. And let's just expose this command. So we're gonna to need to do this where we export our Anthropic API key, and we'll go back to the console where we created that new key and paste it in here. And we can just check that we set it properly like this. And then we're gonna run this command. So on the first time that you run it, it's probably gonna take a couple of minutes to load all of the dependencies from Docker, but I've already ran it once, so it should work pretty smoothly here. You can see that it's gonna start up this virtual machine and it still takes a couple seconds. It's pretty intensive. Okay, so now that it's finished loading all of the dependencies, you'll get this message that the computer use demo is ready. So we can open localhost 8030 or 8080. Man, click that. So in this virtual environment, you can see that you have the CSV terminal, Firefox, and PDF handy on your right hand side, um, as well as a calculator. But in this one, I don't think you're able to like click on any of the windows for some reason, probably for safety purposes. Whereas in the REPL environment, you're actually able to click here and you can probably log into your accounts, do certain things like give it access to your Gmail. So back in our local environment, I'm just gonna ask Claude to do something for me. I'm gonna go to Firefox and do research on where I should stay in Bali for a good time. So this environment is basically the same as the REPL environment. It's using the exact same source code, except we just have some different tools available to us. You can see that um, it's moving a little bit quicker for some reason. Um, and you can see that it's actually using the mouse to move to specific pixels on the screen. And apparently this was one of the hardest parts of training the LLM to use computers. Um, training it to do like these pixel by pixel movements to click on the right spot was actually pretty challenging. Um, if you've heard of the famous strawberry example where you ask an LLM to count the number of R's in a strawberry, for some reason it's like notoriously, notoriously hard. And so, yeah, these smaller, more like fine tuned tasks are harder for LLMs to execute. You can see here, it's gonna navigate to Firefox. And when running locally, I've found that um, it has to like skip these steps because there's this like annoying pop-up window that always appears on Firefox and it wastes a bunch of tokens and a little bit of money here. So it's gonna successfully navigate through that. And you can see that it quickly searches for best areas to stay in Bali for tourists and it's able to continue on. So yeah, I would say that it's still some pretty basic use cases for computer use. I don't see this for replacing virtual assistants anytime soon or replacing our jobs as coders where it can like open your text editor look at the screen, look at the UI, and, and sort of like implement UIs um, almost fully autonomously. It's not at that step yet. It's only at 15% of uh, like the evaluation criteria compared to humans, which are at 
70 to 75%. And so, yeah, if we look back at some other tools for prompting, okay, so it looks like our tool has successfully like looked up places in Bali, looked at like Ubud was one of the most relevant places to go. And now it's searching up the best areas to stay in Bali again. So it's like kind of in a loop right now, just wasting our tokens. So yeah, this is definitely a very beta feature. Uh, don't, you know, throw all your API. Uh, don't put too much money into this. Set some limits so that you're not wasting all your money. Um, and then just before we leave off the video, I'll also show you an example of how this is all working. Okay, so in this example, I just set up a very basic API request to this messages endpoint from Anthropic. And all this is going to do is pass our API key, pass in the Anthropic version, as well as pass in this beta flag that we're using the new computer use model. Then I just added a simple uh, hard-coded screenshot path for this screenshot I took of a Wikipedia page. So based on that screenshot, it's going to convert that into base64, which is what we pass into the API. So turn that into a base64 image, a base64 encoding, which is just like this really long string. Um, and then it's going to append whatever the user message was. So it could be like, read the text on the page and click a button. So this is the part that's pretty, um, if we look into the actual source code of the model, I think it's in loop, computer tools. Yeah, computer tool. So if you look at computer tool from Anthropic, this defines all of the tools that the agent can use for interacting with the screen, the mouse, the keyboard. And it actually describes um, sort of like the scaling as well if the screen isn't the right size. And then it's just creating that architecture for it to execute shell actions like clicking on a certain x, y coordinate, or maybe typing some text that the LLM passes in. We go back to our simple demo. I just pass in three simple tools. So a display screen, uh, the name of the tool, which is just a computer. Um, I also pass in a text editor that it can open and a terminal that it can open. And then I pass in this messages flag, which contains hopefully the conversation history. But for this one, we're just going to use single messages. And then if we get a successful response from Anthropic, we'll just print that response. So I'll pass my API key into the function above. And then I'm just putting in three test messages regarding a Wikipedia page. So let's just run this to see how it works. And I'll this. OK, so it looks like the first message got through. And it's just trying to, the user asked to click on the talk tab in the Wikipedia page. So you can see that it takes a screenshot to get the exact coordinates of the talk link. And so what it's actually doing is taking the screenshot and counting pixels there, I believe. You can see on the second task, it's asking to type neural networks into the search box. And so Claude is going to respond with a tool type for some reason, even though it already has the screenshot passed into it in base64 encoding. And then you can see on the third task here, I'm asking it to create a new directory called neural networks. And so it's actually going to call the tool, the bash tool, and it's going to try to use this, execute this command called make dir neural networks. Okay. And so for each one of these, you can see the input tokens and output tokens that it's using. So you can start to count how much this is costing. And then, yeah, I guess another important thing to note is that Claude is not executing any of these, any of these functions. It's just passing in what it, what you should be executing on your computer. If it's a bash command, if it's certain um, text that you should be typing into, into the browser on your screen. So it's not actually controlling your computer. Um, it's actually just telling you what to do. And then you execute those functions on your own computer. So similar to how function calling works, if you've watched my previous video on using OpenAI function calling, um, it's a pretty uh, similar concept where the model doesn't have your actual code. Um, it's just telling you how to run your code and then passing those functions to you for you to run them yourself. All right, guys, I hope that tutorial was helpful for you. And if this was at all interesting to you, I do have an AI agency where I work with companies to implement generative AI into their software or to help you create your first AI app idea. So check out the link in the description if you want to work with me. Bye.